Hello everyone and welcome back to JCB Pioneer Mars, a game where we are colonizing the red planet using futuristic JCB equipment that is also a mining simulator. <laughs> uh, we are continuing where we left off in the last video and I must say that um, as you, uh, some of you rightfully pointed out in the comment section, I actually uh, was overzealous with uh, my suit upgrades and uh, had to start over to get us to the point where um, where we are right now because the game actually uh, didn't uh, <laughs> didn't want us to cooperate anymore and um, since this game is uh, still really really baggy uh, this is my fourth attempt at actually <laughs> getting us back to the point where we were and hopefully this time it will uh, it will work as uh, as expected so what we need to do is actually um, right now is actually go to this trade post here and uh, pick a mission. And I think the most important thing that we need to do right now is um, basically get the oxygen uh, factory running because, you know, um, we can survive a little bit without food, but uh, I don't think that we'll survive for long without uh, without oxygen. So, so um, yeah, so uh, we've picked the oxygen mission and now the thing, next thing that we need to do is place the um, oxygen generator, which will be somewhere in our i mean we, we need to pick a right location for it and i was thinking that this area here should be probably reserved for um a really big power plant like you know I'm, b I'm a big fan of solar panels and um so i think there will be like a big solar power plant over here um i i, I saw that um you could also build the wind turbines in this game which i find rather let's call it um strange because why would you build solar turbines on Mars when uh, the um, uh, atmosphere is so thin that they actually would produce almost zero power? But as we saw already, um, <laughs> the dust devils do damage in this game, so I guess uh, wind turbines are also relatively uh, useful. Uh, anyway, uh, we need to pick a little bit of oxygen because uh, I suppose that... Uh, We'll need it, but um, yeah, let's go check out the 3D printer because you see the 3D printing habitats that we're building, and not habitats, but um, buildings. Uh, we'll use this um, hyper advanced technology that uh, will basically project the building if we provide the printer with uh, enough materials. But what I actually find interesting about this concept is that um, a very uh, concept like this is developed currently by NASA. Although it doesn't look so shiny and <laughs> and uh, it does not utilize uh, you know this kind of technology that is straight out of uh, science fiction, but um, uh, 3D printed uh, habitats are actually something that NASA is uh, considering for um, uh, the Luna Village. And uh, as far as we know right now, the idea is that. Um, those uh, 3D printed habitats would um, utilize uh, marsh, uh, not Martian, l um, lunar soil, uh, lunar regolith that would be then hardened using uh, microwaves. And uh, you could use small, you know, an array of, of small drones that would collect the regolith, assemble it into, you know, kind of like a dome shaped structure, and then um, harden it using microwaves. And uh, uh, the, lab the uh, experiments that I wrote about. Uh, experiments that I read about sorry I didn't I didn't write about any because I haven't performed them but <laughs> I read about some and those experiments actually have proven that this regolith after being hardened by a not so powerful microwave beam is actually pretty sturdy and uh, is very suitable for for making a habitat out of it which is which is interesting because uh, you know it means that uh, you could only like um, send the um, the uh, skeleton of the base and uh, you don't need to send the whole thing uh, to the moon which basically lowers the um, the costs of building such a base to quite significantly and uh, those small drones could also be operated autonomously uh, they don't need to be powered they could be solar powered because on the moon as you know um, sun is rather a bit more abundant than uh, here on earth and um, yeah, that's a very interesting concept. I, I actually really like it. And uh, here, um, with our advanced JCB equipment, we will be doing pretty much the same thing. Uh, <laughs> although uh, we are doing all the gathering and all the mining. And um, 
as you can see, uh, as you remember, we equipped our um, JC, J, uh, JMC X18. Yes, I, I finally remembered how this vehicle is called. It's, I, I just couldn't, this couldn't just stick in my head. Uh, with an excavation arm, which looks really cool. I really like it. And um, we are mining uh, all the resources that we need to mine. Although, the problem that I've run uh, into before was that the cargo hold in this vehicle is really small and um, we will end up dumping a lot of resources that we will need later and uh, that's something I, I, I think we need to fix relatively soon because as you see those uh, resource veins they are actually uh, quite limited in, their, um, uh, in the amount of resources that they can yield and um, this is something I... Uh Oops. Oh, that was that was unexpected. My bad driving. <laughs> this is something I don't really like. Uh, I mean, the, the the waste of resources. Because if the resources are limited, and um, I really want to have like a big ass base here, so I would hold. I would I would like to stick to every single piece of like, material that I can mine. And um, yeah, I don't like wasting natural resources, especially when they are so scarce. So. So we will have to figure a way to actually, once we get the essentials up and running, to have like a, you know, a little bit of better storage capacity. Okay, so what we need to transfer? We need to transfer some iron. Let's do that. We need to transfer some copper. Let's uh, do that as well. And we need to transfer some zinc. Let's do that as well. So what we are left with, um, the aluminium or the aluminum. Uh, zinc, copper, and uh, iron. Um, actually, actually, something that I wanted to tell you that I, uh, thanks to your help, I've figured out is that in the inventory, on the right hand side in the hexagon, is the amount of uh, resources that we have, and in the small rectangle on the left, it's the amount, um, it's the storage space that it occupies. So this is something I have figured out thanks to uh, your very helpful comments that you've left in the comment section. So, so um, yeah, thank you very much. Now, uh, now at least I know what I'm doing a little bit more. So let's go inside and uh, connect this. Um, oh, we finished the expedition. Awesome. <gasps> Look how many research points we've got. That is great. And we've got a little bit uh, more of JCB credits that we still on. Um, I still don't get. <laughs> we should buy anything, and from who? Because we're the only guy, we're the only guy, I guess. Not people, but just one person here on Mars. So who's going to sell us anything? Right. So let's connect this oxygen generator. And now, as you can see, we are generating oxygen, which is, oh, which is so cool. Yeah. Uh, I guess we can refill the oxygen in our suit because right now uh, for some reason I was thinking that actually with the oxygen generator at least the habitation unit would be um, filled with oxygen so that would not run out but apparently what it does is just generates more of those oxygen canisters here I guess well never mind that but uh, the next thing that we need to do is probably um get to food and water up and running but first i wanted to show you something really really cool so let's go to the trade po trade post and see what we can buy what new toys we can buy once we get uh, a lot more money check this beauty out this is our jmc x18 the one that we have currently which um you know we already have but we can buy more than just one but this just take this thing and what actually raised my curiosity quite a lot, I must admit, is that it says here that it is designed to um, to actually drive for long distances and uh, between colonies and warehouses on a larger scale. Does that mean that we can have multiple colonies here on Mars? That would be that would be sweet. That would be very sweet. But check what we can also get later on, like this, um, you know. That's an amazing digging machine. I would totally... I, uh, well, uh, pun. <clears throat> I dig that. <laughs> I really like it. I mean, 
can be as you can see all of those all of those vehicles can be even specialized i mean specialized even further so yeah so that is uh pretty interesting uh another cool thing is if we go into the colony plan visualizer and take a look at what other buildings we can have like uh for example this power unit see uh we can have uh, wind turbines that i oh so those those are those um helical turbines okay those might probably work on mars i suppose because um those turbines here on earth are uh, like um hyper responsive very efficient as well and hyper responsive so maybe in low atmosphere they would also work but thing that actually got my interest up and running is when you go here into the not here research units i found it the last time the warehouse yep check this out how big it is but later on what you can get oh here it is um landing pad we can get shuttles coming to our base to help us you know deliver some goods probably in the future just just take a look at how big this thing is like this is this is amazing i want to build one although i must say that um we're probably not equipped to do that yet okay so um i suppose we should go back on the surface of um, mars and uh, <laughs> stop dreaming and actually do the uh, another mission which is emergency rations and um, obviously we need to build a hydroponics lab uh, yeah so let's accept that and let's go back to the colony plan visualizer and uh, hydroponics hydroponics probably should be as close as we can get it to uh, the oxygen generator and the um, the hub so I think here would be a good location. And then we need to collect um, some more iron and um, some carbon. We already have the aluminum, which is which is great. So let's go transfer that. I think we've also have some extra iron that uh, I've collected the last time. So um, yeah, we have two. We have two iron and uh, we need eight more iron and um, ten carbon okay okay um, hmm so can I for example store some of that um, material here in my uh, hub I can that's great okay so I don't need to throw it away which is which is great already uh, yeah Let's see. So there is one mining zone. It's quite far away from here. So um, before we before we go there, let's maybe repair and uh, refill our J J. Uh, I forgot how this vehicle X18. But what J X J M X J X M? I don't even know. I don't remember. Right. Off we go to mine some carbon and iron. So the iron was over here, right, where we just mined it, but the carbon was quite, this is quite far away, actually. Yep. And uh, it might be quite dangerous, actually, as, uh, as you, you, will, uh, you, you will see in a moment. Mars is pretty dangerous. Well, I've also figured out last time actually <laughs> when i was fighting the, the game crushes is that you need to actually use this this scanner pretty often to get info about um you know about the resource veins and stuff because uh, if they are not detected then you will never know mm -hmm. so what we have the meteor shower and the corrosive fumes that are going to destroy our vehicle problem is that you can upgrade those vehicles later on as if, um, if I remember correctly and keep them and give them some some shieldings against different types of um, like um, threats but uh, right now none of that is applied to our J uh, M X whatever that vehicle is called I forgot already and um, yeah the 
problem is that we cannot really risk driving through any of that because that's that's gonna end uh, in a disaster. That spells disaster basically. Any anything that we see, the meteors, the uh, you know uh, fumes, the uh, radiation, uh, even those dust devils, they are just basically will, 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 will um, rip us to shreds. So we want to avoid that. Why was I shocked? What is going on? I don't I don't get that. Suppose it's a bug because um uh, because the uh, hull is uh, still at one hundred percent integrity. So maybe I should not be worried that much. Although as you can see, uh, the dust devils are back. Oh, there's a crate here as well. Cool. Okay, let's see what we have here. Mm -hmm. And that's carbon. Relatively big uh, resource vein. So let's mine it. And uh, likely for me, that's just carbon. So, so no wasted resources out of this one. I must say, I really like it. I really like this, how this vehicle looks like. So, maybe we should uh, reproduce it in KSP. Maybe even make a mod that would introduce this kind of vehicle. That would be that would be cool. That would be something. Although I must say, as of um, today, <laughs> I haven't really figured out how to make wheels in KSP. Never worked for me. <laughs> so once I get that running, I uh, I'll be glad to make a bit uh, a bunch of for track mods for you. Just need to figure out how to do that. Okay, so so we still need some iron. Why am I getting shocked? Like there's nothing here. Okay, never mind. I don't know. Never mind that then. This time, whoops! Again. Although. Although. Hull's pretty. I mean, hull's a little bit damaged, but I don't know. I don't really know why. Okay, there is a, another resource vein right over here next to those geysers, and if I remember correctly, this one had some iron in it. Okay, let's see. What is it? Iron aluminum. Okay, I think that's uh, that's okay. With a little bit of luck, we will we'll get just the enough iron before we run out of um, cargo space. That would be great. Look, we're getting experience for mining. <laughs> I like it. Okay, so we have quite a lot of iron. Aluminum. Okay. I wonder if there is a way to tell how much iron do we have. Okay, so I think we, we're done. Mm -hmm. Without going into the um, the inventory, because that would be, be pretty handy in the future. Okay, so here are the meteors that we want to avoid. Here is the um, corrosive zone that we want to avoid as well. So I think the route that I've chosen the last time would be pretty cool. Whoops. Okay, let's avoid that. Yeah, we, we don't want to take any direct hits. Because <laughs> that, that will end uh, our adventure pretty quickly, I'm, I'm afraid. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Let's see how fast we can drive. Let's do some sick jumps. <laughs> Speed meter would be something. It would be a nice addition. I would like it. Okay, so we'll have like the oxygen generator running. Then right now we'll build the uh, 3D, uh, not the 3D printer, the hydroponics. Whoops. Whoa, that was close. That <laughs> was a little bit too close, in fact. <laughs> okay, so we have iron. Okay, let's transfer that. We have carbon. Let's transfer that as well. 
Okay, so everything is done. Now we just need to wait for um, the printer to finish building it. I think the animations are not in place yet, but... Um, but uh, it still looks pretty cool. Uh, okay, so now we need to connect that to the net, to the um, power grid. But first, let's maybe maybe let's um, refuel and refill our um, vehicle. Jesus, I just can't remember how this vehicle is called. Does it say when I hover over it? No, it doesn't. So, so I guess that will remain a mystery for the moment. Okay, another mission completed. 12,000 research points. Awesome. Very cool. 15,000 credits. Even better, like, just take a look at that. 14, 40,000 JCB credits. That's, uh, that's quite a lot. Okay. Uh, no, what I was, uh, going to do, right. Um, connect this to the power grid. Okay, so let's, um, how shall we connect this? Maybe, maybe that way. And see, we are, um, we don't have enough water to to supply our hydroponics lab. So I guess what we need to do is take another mission, which is, you guessed it, water supply. Oh right, one water collector. Again, where shall we place it? Uh -huh. What's this landing pad? Hydroponics. Water collector. <laughs> Does here look okay? Or would you like it here? Although I don't like how this would be connected. I don't like it. This area here, as we know, is reserved for um, our amazing um, solar power plant. And uh, I guess uh, I guess we'll have to stick with have to place it here. I don't know. Okay. That is great. 10 silica, 5 nickel, 10 aluminum. Right. And I would argue that we already have some aluminum. So we can transfer that. Let's take a look how sweet this small hydroponics lab is. Like, I would totally eat half of that, half of that daily <laughs> on my bed today. So, um... I suppose that's why it's called um, the emergency uh, rations. <laughs> right. Okay. F is the light. Because I'm now driving during a Martian night. So it can be a little bit more uh, dangerous. And yeah, let's go over there. That's um, one. Uh, I mean, we have two um, resource veins indicated on the HUD. And uh, both of them are equally distant from our base. But I think that we haven't been over there yet. So let's go explore. Let's see what's behind that hill. Because I'm pretty uh, pretty interested by that. Actually, I must say that I really like how the landscapes here look. It's very nice. <laughs> Whoops. I think I drove into something. <laughs> Probably a um, bad idea is to, to look um, where I'm driving instead of just admiring the landscape. I suppose. Okay. Why am I getting shocked again? What is with that? Like I couldn't see any dust levels then. Wow, take a look at this. Take a look at that. That is awesome. Also, yeah, another thing that I wanted to tell you. I've been thinking about this assistant of ours. Like, who is she exactly? And uh, more importantly, or, or maybe equally importantly, where is she? Because, like, like, you know, incoming transmission, meaning that she's not here with us, but um, where is she exactly? Like, she can't be on Earth, because, you know, the communications between... Communications between uh, Mars and Earth normally takes between 8 to 20 minutes. Um, depending on how far away Mars is from Earth. 
and uh, we get like instant communication with her. So the only place that she can be is in Mars orbit. Which means if there is like a spaceship around the um, you know Mars and then or a space station and there are people in it. Why they sent only me? <laughs> it's like, not that I um, doubt my um, competences in setting up a Martian colony all by myself, although I do. <laughs> like, I, I, why wouldn't you send multiple crews and uh, you know multiple people down here to actually speed up the process and you know just avoid the um, possibility that everything is, um, you know, hinged on the one individual that is probably not very skilled in driving heavy JCB equipment on the... Um, as you see, <laughs> on Mars. Yeah, that would, um... That, that, that looks like a bad planning, really. Another option for her is that she is not a human at all, or at all. And she's an AI, and she's only pretending to be, you know, close by, and she's in fact like, I don't know, installed in the hub or, or I don't know, somewhere. And then, why is she lying to us? Like, what are her motives? I wanna know. It's, it's something that I wanna know. It's, it's, you know, mysterious, it's a secret, like, uh, what is going on here? It's like in this movie, what was this movie called? Um, I forgot. The one about uh, mining uh, helium-3 on the moon, where um, the main uh, protagonist turned out to be a clone that uh, was actually killed after, after you know, he ran out of usefulness and um, uh, another clone was pulled out of the shelf with the same memories and uh, his entire life he believed that he, after, after his mission is completed he will go back to his family but he never had a family because he was just a clone so maybe here is the same situation like look how conveniently we've crash landed on the surface of Mars and just like everything is here suspicious isn't it don't tell me that uh, doesn't look or sound a little bit strange to you I would not believe that Okay, so here is um, the location where we salvaged the, um, uh, I think, part coupling. But uh, I think we need to drive a little bit further. Can we climb this? <laughs> Check this out, this vehicle is amazing. Okay, and here is the resource vein somewhere nearby. Okay, so we need 10 silica and 5 nickel. And, uh... We'll get... We'll have the water collector up and running. So, that would be, that would be something. That would mean that uh, we would have, I think, everything at least to at least not die on the surface of Mars. Because oxygen's up, food's up, um... And, uh, water would be up as well. Okay, so... So what do we have here? Iron, silica, nickel. So we'll probably need to dump quite a lot of iron before we're done. Fortunate, but maybe necessary. Okay, the mining process could be a little bit more entertaining, I must say. I mean, I'm still not complaining, although it's a bit repetitive. <laughs> it's like it's hyper slow and uh, and yeah. <laughs> so I'll do my best to entertain you with my um, uh, storytelling, which is uh, maybe not on the highest level. But look, what is interesting about, <laughs> about this resource vein is that um, the resources are actually visually disappearing, like this this grubber that we have. This excavation arm is actually grabbing resources, and then where we grab them, there is a hole. So um, you can actually see how how much mined it is. Mined. Yep. Nickel silica. It would be also cool if we had like a selective method of filtering out the stuff that we actually need. 
Oh, we were lucky. Like, we got only a little bit of iron. That was cool. Okay. Okay. So, let's go back to our awesome base. Oh, that's devils. That's devils. I don't like you. I'm too fast for you. <laughs> Never catch me. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> I take that back, okay? <laughs> I was just... It was just harmless bragging. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if there is a um, speed upgrade to this J, um, JMX, X, I don't know, <laughs> X18. Okay, is, um, I wasn't here before, was it? This corrosive zone. No, I don't think it was here. Whoa, no, 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 slow down. Oof, I was close. I was, I was really close. Like this um, rock formation is also a little bit interesting for me because that uh, that kind this kind of rock formations the ones that you see uh, here normally um, are created by wind erosion and that will indicate that uh, there is um, a very strong wind erosion on Mars and I'm not sure if that's the case. I mean, I'm sure it's not the case recently, but. Uh, I don't know, actually. That's that would be something that would be really interested to like figure out, or I, I don't know if there are scientists actually trying to figure out this kind of this kind of shapes if they if they exist on Mars. They would have to be like extremely ancient, really, really old, from the times where um, Mars really had like thick thicker atmosphere that would be able to create those. Pretty cool. Like uh, you can look uh, back into the, the history of the planet a couple billions years ago, so easily. Actually, everything is out there. Okay, um, silica. So that would be it. Okay, nickel. Uh, nickel. There you go. Nickel. Awesome. So we have the uh, what is it? The uh, water collector. Oh look! Oh, the animation on this one is actually working. That was awesome. Uh, the emergency hydration pouch. So I guess that's something that we'll use to, to refill water. Okay. Okay. So our base has all the essentials up and running, I suppose. Uh, we might want to connect that um, um, water collector to the power grid as well. So let's... Let's do that. Okay, so we got some extra karma. I guess that's that's good. Uh, we're level 4 survivor, whatever that means. And then we've got a lot of JCB credits as well. That is awesome. 50,000. So we could technically buy a new JMC. I, I, I need to remember that. JMC X18. All of those vehicles are actually called JMC. So it would be, it would be nice if I remember that. <laughs> I know I'm hopeless. <laughs> oh my god. We could buy that. Although I'm tempted to save a little bit more money. And actually get the... Um, yeah. Some, some other goodies. Can we... Ooh, we can sell resources. Check this out. We can sell iron, aluminium, carbon. Can't sell oxygen though. Zinc, copper. Or we can oh we can buy just vehicles. Okay. Okay, that's great. Okay, okay, okay. So we have some extra missions that we'll do next time. And uh Let's see what's in the crafting station, maybe, first. This is not active, so I guess no coffee for me. <laughs> and in the crafting station, we can... Uh, create some stuff, like small battery pack. That delivers a small charge to any battery pack. Well, I guess that's great. Mm-hmm. Some interesting st stuff. Dropship, dropship summoning beacon. Ooh. Ooh. 
Hmm. This is interesting. See that uh, another bug. <laughs> the thing that we needed to salvage initially was actually is still in my inventory. And it's gone now. Okay. So I think... I think... This will be all for today, so thank you very much for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed yet another episode of JCB Pioneer Mars, and if you did, please consider liking this video, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I would also like to thank Sharax and all my other patrons on Patreon, your continuous support means very much to me. My name is Mark Frum, and I will see you next time. Bye!